Hello, everyone. From Johnson's Lanes in Hamden, Connecticut, this is Jim Kaufman and Josh Lowell with Duckpin TV. We are here for the finals of the Corey's Ketchup and Mustard Connecticut Series Finals. We are picking up action quarterfinals. We have four matches just starting now, and then the winners will face each other via the brackets until we have a winner. And the featured match here on lanes one and two will be Kenny Thomas, a host here at Johnson's, a manager, along with Duckpin TV's own Eric Latesca. And as you can see up on the screen, Ken already has five. We believe uh, that is the um, handicap. So Ken is getting five pins this game, and he's going to start off the action on lane one. heavy hit leaves just the seven a nice break on that one yeah, it looked like he was staring at the three seven there for a second and <laughs> wood did its job the wonders of this place everton likes to bounce around especially down here on this end got quite a few breaks all over it at the pin bouncing out of the pit just the way that you want to start make your first spare break start off with a mark absolutely Over here on lane two, we've got Eric Latesca on his first pitch. Just off the side. Little fold to try on that. Just leaving this leaving the 610 to shoot up for a pen box. And with this being just a, a one game match. Every, every pin's important. You don't want to leave any pins on the deck here, even if it's just for a 10 box. You just never know when those extra handful of pins will come into Absolutely, Jim. Come into use. Especially for the qualifying, with the, score, the scoring pace being a little bit lower, especially, especially for the bottom seeds. Eric didn't even realize he was in. He was in by, uh, in by a pin. The, the last of the couple bottom seeds, except just by a few pins. So it was a, a big finish on his part. Finds himself down a pin and a hit early, early on in this match. Set it up, set on lane one. And similar to Kenny, who was looking at a split for a split, split second, but the wood trips out the seven, leaving just the six pin. Yeah, nice little jab for a hit there on that one. Nice extra bounce. Uh, with it just being one game, those little breaks one way or the other can definitely swing the momentum. There we go, all and over it. Eric covers as well. Take advantage of that one. Ken Thomas cruised in as the number one seed. He threw 766 scratch with uh, a bunch of big games to finish. He threw 183 and 178 in their games, including five. Slid in quite easily. Another heavy hit, but carries them all. Way to take advantage of that nine drop. A little bit of dirty work over on lane two. Gonna fill up his strike big. And that's good pitch again. A double. Good pitch. So right Kenny out to the early, early lead here. Right where he left off from the end of the qualifying. And that has to be a good feeling. Finishing with a, a big game in the qualifying and knowing that you're, you're bowling well and in a good frame of mind, carrying over into the brackets. Oh, absolutely. It's wow. Everybody's had it once and what a horrible break for Eric. That was a good 1-3 pocket hit to leave that 7-8. Just missed. 
again, he can't get too off track here. You've got to hold as much wood as you can. I know you're down a double already, but. Only, only three frames in, and he's against, he's thrown one hit versus Ken's spare and a double, so it's definitely a uh, little bit of pressure building already. Oh, wow. That was a quick look at the uh, replay of the 7-8 last frame. and Didn't want to didn't want to see that hit, I guess. Either. Coming back live to the 5-7-10. I don't know what's easier. Oh, you can tell he was go trying to make it, or at least try and slide the 5 over, but misses Absolutely. everything. Especially here when we get the, the pins dancing, we can, uh, you never know, you can make a shot. It's definitely an opportunity for a 7-10 conversion, along with the 5-7-10. Ken Thomas coming up on lane two. He's working on his double strike. Can really put a lot of distance between him and Eric. With a good ball or another strike here. Looking good down there. A little light. Nice mixing three pin. And now we need a runner. Again, this tournament series finals, as well as the entire tournament series, has been brought to you, is being brought to you by Corey's Ketchup and Mustard, Burger Bar, Main Street, and Manchester. Kenny waiting for someone to clear the deadwood here on lane two, looking at just the three pin. And this, these are all of the current matchups. We have the top seed, Ken Thomas, taking on Eric Lateska in the featured match. We also have number two seed, Eric Pellet, taking on John Zekas. Number three seed, Mike Labrie, taking on the number six, Cindy Bunger. And the number four, Sean Lateska, taking on the number five seed, Jeff Cornelius. And it's one game, winners advance until we have a champion. And finally, the series stops come down to this match right here. Almost. It's one and done right now. Absolutely. And right on his single. Way to hop on that one again. And Kenny does not get iced with, by waiting. Covers it squarely in the belly. And Kenny up to a big 40 or 39 pin lead after just three frames. Looking to add to it in the fifth frame here, working on a spare. Five. Big pull again. Yep. Leaves, the, leaves another six pin to shoot at. Good break again. Obviously, hitting the head pin, you expect to get a decent break at least, but uh, goes one way or the other, unfortunately. On yep. it again, and right in the face. Without a doubt, and that's all marks through the first five frames for Kenny Thomas. And he has a commanding 51-pin lead. Here's a replay of that first ball. He's been, he's been heavy a lot in the pocket, but that one, almost close to a perfect pocket hit, leaving just a six pin. You see those pins flying in the back. You never know. Now we're getting to almost must mark territory here for Eric. Rips middle for five. So it's three unlucky breaks on the head pin in a row for Eric. Yeah, just off on his second shot. Definitely a uh, must spare situation in that case to get some sort of momentum yeah. going in his corner. Well, it's hard, hard to rip the middle and convert it for a spare, but. Absolutely. but uh, now it's a position where he's uh, at 50 through five frames. Kenny's at 103 plus a hit. He's, he needs to start stringing strikes to make up those 53 pins plus a hit in just five frames. Wow. Looking good. Yeah, just couldn't get, couldn't get the extra one to carry, unfortunately. Leaves the two, three, four, six. 
It's probably the most makeable leave that he's had in the last four frames. Absolutely. And it was too heavy there on the three six, but again a front facing uh, replay of Eric's form here. Very compact sound at the line. Right. Good Very reach and point of release. Simple delivery, knee bend, extension, follow through. If there was one way to teach the youth bowlers that in this day and age on how to bowl duck pin, that's a good prime example of that. Absolutely. Well, first bad ball from Kenny in a while, but lucky to get six here. Oh, he is human. I guess so. But still something to shoot at here, the one, three, six, eight. And uh, given that he's been heavier in the pocket, that might bode well for trying to convert this spare. A little Ooh, too heavy. A little heavy. We're going to pick up at least two here for a nine box and get the train rolling again. Well, way off, but still grabs an extra pin. He has 117 through six and a 69 pin lead. Any sort of an opening for Eric? This is 68 pin lead, I'm sorry. This is definitely the one that he's got, which means that he, Ken Thomas has not marked, and in fact, he even gained a pin. So it's, if there was any light to the situation, yeah. this would definitely be a, be a start of it. Oh. But it's got to come very soon. And once again, off the head pin leads to the 159. It's no slouch with, uh, with the full rack there. But uh, definitely for a spare shot, it can be interesting. Yeah. So obviously, well, still have to hit it very, very full on the head pin and hope it carries back. And we all know how to make the 159. It's just a matter of can we make it when we want to and not on our first ball. Absolutely. Just off taking out the nine pin. He still leaves two pins standing. Yep. Take the nine box. And... Uh, with a 58, 68, 58, my math is a little fuzzy here, 58 pin deficit. It, very rare you see someone make up 58 pins in four frames, but that's what Eric's going to try to do here, starting in the seventh. Needs to start striking. A little light, all right, got a couple extra at least. Looking at the four pin for a spare shot. Here's a replay of that. And you'll see that his ball tails away from the one three, but finally gets the deadwood to work to his benefit. What that looks like look appears to be the head pin flying off that right side wall, taking doing some damage on that left side, and he picks his four pin nice and clean. And now it's basically striker die mode. Gets nine, but it might be a little case a little too little too late here. Took a Get good him. look at his approach once again. Looks like he's a spot bowler. Yep. Looks, looks pretty close to the foul line, shooting at his target. Nice and light. He gains ten pins in that frame. Just sneaks by a, a ten pin for the spare though. And that would have just made the 7-10. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. And I'm sure that kind of the types of thoughts going through Eric's mind right now. You know, I'm sure he upset he missed the single and unlucky with all those other head pin hits uh, throughout the game. Just wasn't wasn't meant to be, I don't think, for Eric in this match. Unfortunately not, no. It's, it's, uh, it's how the game goes once in a while. You can be... You can be at the top of your game at, well, at one point and unfortunately at the bottom, at, and it can be a game-to-game -game basis. It's, again, mixes the pins around yep. for another strike, carries that 5-10 out last as yep. we watch his approach. Really, sl really slings that ball in there, gets it out, really good point of release. Definitely very aggressive at the foul yep. line and carries out that 5-10. Uh, basically puts a bow on this match. Kenny with 136 plus in the eighth. Eric Lateska, 88 in the eighth. It's just a matter of, I think, 
Ken trying to stay in that zone and keeping a rhythm to carry it over to his next match here. Just want to focus on the next ball and he drops nine. So it's just a matter of determining the margin of victory here. Right on that seven pin. Locked and loaded still. Those two frames did not bother him one bit. So again, Ken in his last game of qualifying had a 178, and he's got 156 plus in the ninth. So he is he's definitely in the zone and at the right time. Eric dropping nine, and now of course, unfortunately, he gets that late kick out. He's too too little, too late at this point, unfortunately. Exactly. Nonetheless, still a good good first ball. Nice and full, carried out that four pin, almost takes out the seven. Right on it, no doubt about it. Looking for a little bit of an exclamation point to finish. Good, good season this season. Filling a spare with eight, it's shooting at the 6'10". Puts him at 106 through nine. And just trying to get to a respectable score here. Oh. And this, uh, this is a combination of uh, bad breaks for Eric, and then when he did finally get some spare leaves, wasn't able to cover. Don't know if it would have made much of a difference given the way Kenny's bowling this game, but Eric Latesca finishes with 115. Congratulates Ken on a job well done here in this quarterfinal match. Kenny will advance. Ken definitely breaking up these. He's looking at splits and gets the wood to break it up for him, even Absolutely. just the 10. Ken was playing a game of one ball right now. He'd be. Uh be pretty pretty well up there. He's he's definitely got a good good first ball working for him right now. Yeah, and Ho Hum right. picks the spare. Puts him at one seventy five plus a ball in the tenth. So he is over three fifty his last two games plus a ball. With a ball to go. Some pretty good bowling, I must say. Again, Kenny is one of the proprietors, managers here at Johnson's Lanes. He and his mom, Sandy Thomas, gracious host of the finals, and drops nine for a 184. So great bowling by Kenny Thomas. He defeats Eric Latesca 184 to 115, and he will advance to the semifinals. And we'll go over to Jim with some commentary with this match's winner. All right, Jim Crawford here with that quarterfinal match winner, Ken Thomas. Carried over that great bowling from the last game and qualifying into your quarterfinal match. Tell you, how's it feeling out there? Feeling good right now. Um, getting good lift on the ball and they're breaking. Eric, unfortunately, ran into a few breaks early, but didn't work out and made it a little easier not having to worry about fighting, so. Smooth. It looked like you both were a little heavy in the pocket and you were breaking up splits. You had that double early and Eric was uh, ripping and splitting. Yeah, he did. He had a few bad breaks early and that's, that's tough. It's tough to come back from. Luckily, I caught a few early and that's what you need. And then you just run with it, hopefully. So. so you were able to convert all the breaks and that led you on your way to the semifinal. So we're just yeah, waiting to find out who you're going to bowl next and uh, good luck. All right. Back to you.
right, so that was the conclusion of one of the four quarterfinal matches here. Corey's Ketchup and Mustard Tournament Series Finals at Johnson's Lanes in Hamden, Connecticut. It looks like we're waiting just for one more quarterfinal match to finish before we move on to the semifinals. We do know that one of the four semifinalists is Kenny Thomas of Johnson's Lanes. He defeated Eric Latesca 184 to 115. And as soon as we have the results of the other three quarterfinal matches, we will pass that on. And then we will be setting up for our semifinal, featured semifinal match. And then obviously moving on to the tournament series finals. It's been a great series this season. Most of the tournaments well attended. The plan was to have a $1,000 prize to the tournament series finals champion. And that's what we're looking at between all of the entries, a lot of people bowling and participating in the tournament series, along with also participating in the fundraising events sponsored by the BAC. We do appreciate all of the help. And I do help out with the BAC as well as Duckpin TV, so I have to remember who I'm talking as. But it is greatly appreciated, all of, this, all of the sponsorship, all of our sponsors that we've had including ketchup and mustard. I know Prime Propane was another sponsor. You had Rick Gano, his communications company sponsored a tournament series. And then also the other fundraisers that we've done, tickets to the Wolf Pack, tickets to the Connecticut Science Center. All of these things help raise the funds to provide the prize pool for the finals today. So you know, we appreciate all the bowlers. We appreciate all the sponsors. We appreciate all the viewers that are, are watching us on Duckpin TV, helping us keep the game of Duckpin bowling out in the public eye. And looks like we're getting the quarterfinals results in here. Number two seed Eric Kellett defeated the number seven seed John Zekas. Number three seed Mike Labrie defeated the number six Cindy Bunger. Just awaiting the results of that four versus five quarterfinal. So it looks like that the higher seeds prevailed in two out of the three so far. I'm sorry, all three. The one, the two, and the three seeds all advanced. And I think I just heard that the number four, Sean Latesca, advanced as well. So all top four seeds are moving on. And it looks like our featured match here on lanes one and two is going to be Two bowlers from Holiday Lanes, Mike Labrie and Eric Pellet, both wearing red on Sunday. It is a Masters Sunday, although Tiger Woods is in isn't in contention. He's made that a thing, wearing red on Sunday. And we do thank Josh Lowell for helping me in the booth here for a quarterfinal match while Eric Latesco was bowling. And now it looks like uh, Eric is going to be sitting in the booth here to cover these last two featured matches. So Eric, not very lucky out there, that first match against against Ken Thomas. Yeah, I, what I can mean, you tell us? Sure, I, I, uh, I could point out a little bit of bad luck in the uh, early frames of that, I guess, the first ball. But uh, I will tell you the truth, if, even if I, if I had gotten some breaks there, I mean, Kenny, Kenny's really sharp, um, really didn't miss anything other than a couple off balls in the middle of the game. But when, uh, you know, when he, when he, <laughs> other than those two opens in the middle, I mean, just, I mean, just perfect. On the head pin, covers his spare, covers his marks. I mean, he's looking really, really tough to beat. Um, I really only had a quick chance to walk down and see the outcomes of the other games. But there were some other high scores. Uh, Eric Pellet, 160. John, John Zekas, 150. Eric comes out on top. He's got a, a couple of pins of handicap on John. Uh, my brother, Sean Latesca, uh, the four seed. He's also donning a Duckpin TV shirt today. Uh, Sean came out on top of Jeff Cornelius. I don't Cornelius son. I don't know what Jeff's score was, but Sean was in the 150s. Um, we're we're sh it's shaping up to be a pretty uh, exciting exciting couple of matches here. Absolutely. Now we've shuffled some things around here. The director of the tournament, Marianne. Uh, 
uh, Kachevsky has uh, has moved Ken Thomas off of our featured pair here over to lanes five and six, and we're going to watch uh, <laughs> best pals here square off. Eric Pellet and uh, Mike Mike Labrie. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I believe Looks so. Like they're, they're put themselves in those uh, those places. And we're going to get our scoreboard updated. If bowlers maybe have a chance to throw a few balls. I think um, we will see a little bit of shadow bowling, and then we have to figure out who is going to be on which lane here so we can set the uh, score sheet here for everyone to see, follow along. Yeah, here's a view of... Uh, Duckpin TV set up behind lane one and two. There's Jim saying hello. We've got to thank uh, the young Matthew Gano for manning the camera this for this tournament. Um, while we're thanking people, I'm sure we've, Absolutely. we've thanked uh, Catspin Mustard for, right. for their generous support of not only the tournament series, um, also an event, the last tournament of the of the schedule right. at, at Holiday Lanes, the Ketspin Mustard Championship. Um, if you have not been to Ketspin Mustard. You're missing out. You're missing out. It's they a great burger place. Great burgers, great seasoned fries. They've got a great beer selection. Good bar. Very good crowd. A good crowd. It's always busy in there. It's uh, cozy. It's like, you feel like it's a, you know your local neighborhood type of establishment, but the, the food if you like burgers, you need to go to ketchup and mustard. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about swinging in once we uh, once we wrap things up after this. Uh, Main Street in Manchester. Downtown, downtown Manchester. Downtown Manchester. Um, I encourage you all to stop if uh, if you're looking for a burger. And if you're not in the mood for a burger, Corey Rye also owns Pastrami on Rye. That's right. Yep. Right around the corner, also Another. in Manchester. I yep. highly recommend that. Another local establishment. I mean, Corey's, Corey's a... Big supporter of the local community, he's, uh, he's supported the tournament and the tournament series. Uh, he, he's got friends in the in the duckpin bowling world, and uh, we're all really appreciative of the support that he's shown us. Uh, Absolutely. He, happens, he also sponsors a team that I uh, that I have bowl on down at uh, Holiday Lanes uh, on Monday nights, sponsored league, and you know year in year out, uh, he's been he's been generous enough to 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 sponsor us. So, thank you very much to to Corey and the uh, the rest of the owners of Catspin Mustard. Right there with you on that. If it's, if it's food, <laughs> I appreciate it. And then obviously on top of that, sponsoring duck pin bowling, a local business sponsoring a local sport. I'm all in. So maybe we've got uh, our bowlers coming in here on, on the pair. We can give a little bit uh, of a recap of what they've done so far today. Remember that, that we're through the first round of uh, bracket style finals. Um, you just watched me get uh, overwhelmed <laughs> by Ken Thomas, who was the top qualifier. And um, we're going to end up with Eric Pellet and, uh, and Mike Labrie. Right. And their, their paths to the semifinals, for the five games of qualifying, Eric had five-game scratch score of 727, so well over a 140, almost a one, just over a 145 average. He had 831 with handicap. And then... I believe you had said he had a 160 game against John Zekas in the quarterfinal match. 160, yeah, very exciting match over there on five and six. And then Mike Labrie, five game qualifying score of 717 with handicap 821. And he defeated Cindy Bunger in his first match. And it looks like we're about to get underway. And this is going to be a scratch match. They're both getting the exact number of pins handicap, so we won't bother including that in the scoring. This is a scratch game. Getting a good break through the middle. Gets a little action off the wall and carries the 2 4. You get a second look at it here. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't see it. When you said he got a good break, I'm like, what are you talking about? He ripped the middle, but. And he did initially, but the wood comes and trips the 4 into the 2. Thank you, instant replay. And light on that 3 pin sends it off the wall. I didn't even think he was going to touch the three, but just got over there. And, uh, all right, not a not a bad start. Right. I mentioned in the first match, you know, even if you're not 
getting a mark, it's a one game match. You want to leave as much wood as possible, leave as little wood as possible on the deck. You never know when one or two pins is going to make a difference in your match. Yeah, I hadn't had much of a chance to talk to Eric all day. We were on the opposite sides of the alley, so I really just had a two second conversation with him. What a ball. To tighten that one two pocket. Uh, he, he mentioned he's, he's suffering from a little bit of a pulled groin, and uh, it's, it seems to have. Uh, it doesn't seem to have bothered him, you know. Oh. Here, uh, 727 and 160 followed up on the uh, first game of the of the bracket, and uh, nine and one. Yeah. Well, maybe that type of injury might keep you from rushing the line and getting too fast. And yeah. Trying to keep yourself. It really s sometimes it can rhythm. settle you into you know a really narrow set of uh, physical processes right? right like you you can't you can't stretch out too far you can't go too fast and you're very careful about it and a guy like Eric you know it really benefits him I think when he's got to tighten things up a little bit he's a, such again like you very simple delivery great pocket hit but leaves the seven eight unfortunately and misses everything on the second ball and on the third all right Still out ahead a little bit here after marking in the first frame. Um, probably would have liked to get at least one of those, but right. Eric will bounce back. And now Mike looking to get started here in the second in the second frame on lane two, down a hit. Mike bowled well uh, earlier this week uh, in uh, Monday Night League. I was uh, I was asking him what he thought made the difference, or uh, I think maybe he closed his his night off really well. There's Mike, a little open there, didn't quite square his shoulders to the line. He really snaps that shoulder like behind him on his backswing and then snaps it through when he gets down to the to the line to, to the release. He mentioned uh, just kind of taking the ball and going as making a big difference for him. Just disrupting his rhythm when things aren't going well. And I can see him kind of doing the same thing here. He's not, he's not sitting at the, uh, you know, after he takes his, his uh, stance at the, uh, on the approach here, he does not wait very long. He just gets going. Very big first step, too. I just noticed that in one of the replays. We can take a look at that when we can, but he drops nine here. It's a very big first step, very deliberate approach. Gets teased that he's creeping up on the pins, sneaking up on the pins. But it works for him. That's a big spare here. And he catches it on the right side. And normally, Mike will just turn around once he knows he covers the spare and wasn't quite no, confident. Was, he had to make. She had to look that one down. That was close, but he did cover it. Yeah, the first one maybe a little bit of nerves there to get to get your game going, but expect to see him turning around a little bit now after this. And whoa, what a what a break, what a mix. Yeah, a wow from Eric on the back door strike. Check out this this pin action here. Inside. On the inside of the the two pin, right. not on the outside of it, so not far from a head pin hit. But yep. the head pin did fall forward. Yeah. Didn't didn't it, it fell? It now fell. He's got to take advantage of it. And I wow. think that's how you take advantage of a backdoor strike. Yeah, he, <laughs> Eric Eric Pell is the kind of bowler you really do to kind of expect him to take advantage of a of a backdoor strike. Right. Pretty much guarantee that ball is going to be in the head pin and on the pocket. Here's Eric's delivery. Very simple, compact, nice follow easy to replicate. And that was 10 in the pit pretty quickly. Mike looking to answer on a spare in the third here. Down seven plus a double. And 
misses the head pin again, but does get seven. Wouldn't call it a spare leave, but definitely a makeable shot. Would you call this a spare leave? I think of it as a spare leave. It's uh, you know lower percentage. There's just a couple ways to convert it, but uh, you, you probably want to be light on the uh, on the one pin on the right side. Otherwise, if you're on the outside, something like that can happen. Yeah, and if you're if you're heavier on it, it's you know you're risking not carrying the uh, not carrying the six pin. Right. So and if you're on the inside of the head pin, the pin the ball is doing all the work, taking out all three pins ideally. Mike with 45 through four. And just like we saw in our first quarterfinal match, Ken Thomas and, and, and yourself, that early double really is putting the pressure on, on Mike as it did you. Yeah. Mike really needs good frame here. It doesn't have to be a strike. It just needs to be a pocket hit and a strike or a spare. Well, you know, a spare on this would be, uh, would you know, build up your morale a little right. bit and remind you that, hey, I can, I can still, I can still win this match. I can, I'm still in it. A little bit lucky there. Ripped the middle, left two on each side. Wood takes out the three pin. So this is a, a convertible, a makeable spare. The two four six. If Mike, uh, one thing I pay attention to to see how Mike is, his mechanics are working out for him. Is really his slide. Does he, does he really slide his last foot, or does he kind of plant it? And if he's planting it, if, he's, if you plant your foot, and you, 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 your body basically needs to recoil out of it, right? It's not, it's not really ready to, to be jarred with a really hard landing. And if, you, if you're recoiling in the middle of delivering the ball, it's really hard to right. keep it on To stay smooth, to stay in your, in your form there. Yeah. Eric plus four on his double. That's the ball, and he keeps the pressure on Mike in spite of uh, the four fill on the double. So he jumps out to a 26-pin lead, plus a hit halfway through this match. It's a nice cover. That ball is placed pretty much perfectly. And I'm sure he's thinking, shoot inside of it. he's thinking, why wasn't that my first ball? Oh. Big comeback ball. Little doubt, little doubt there. And the margin here is wide and widening. We saw in the first match, there were a lot of heavy hits, so it was a matter of whether or not the Dead Woods was going to break up the splits or not. Eric's been in the pocket quite a bit this match, where you know, these last two strikes were, were no doubters for sure. And that one looked a lot nicer, and that is what is happening for Mike this game, it seems, that the good ones are heavier through the middle. He's caught a couple of extra pins rather than just really having very little chance of converting a spare. This is a difficult, difficult split, the 2, 4, 7, 10. And he shot it really well. Saw that three, that two pin rather shoot, shoot over toward the direction of the 10, just gotta catch it a little thinner. Right, exactly. Really is at the point where he, he needs to be converting everything he possibly can. Because there's only he only has four frames left and he's he's down thirty six plus. Yeah, this this game has a similar complexion to the one the last one that took place on this pair. It's a fairly one sided match. But Mike's trying to make a last stand. He's Look, really got to have this. This is a big first step that Mike takes there. He stays through, keeps the knee bent. This is a very nice slide there. And there he goes. All right. Eric looking to add to his lead here in the seventh frame. Semi-final match. 
Corey's Ketchup and Mustard Tournament Series Finals. What a ball. Great ball. Leaves just the 10 pin. Yeah, that's the one that he's thrown on lane one two consecutive times now, crossing over into the one two pocket just a little bit. And nice and high flush. This time he doesn't carry the 10. But I assume that 10 pin falls most of the time when you hit it like that. Mm -hmm. Dead on. You know, one thing I'm noticing when we get the reverse angle on Eric is just if you draw a vertical line straight up and down and you look, he is, he is so well balanced and his head is straight up. Right. No wasted movement. Heavy in the 1-3 there. But a good break. A great result. Best result you can ask for. That gives him 140 plus a strike in the eighth. You know, he's he's actually right when I mentioned something, he leans over a little bit to the right. But uh, you know, he's this is what we were talking about earlier. The the margin of his error is really really narrow right, right. now. You so you've got some room. You've got some room for um, not doing exactly what you're looking to do, and especially Eric, with Eric being so target oriented, um, he he recovers even if he's. Sort of out of position right. or off balance. If he's really off balance, well it's not a whole lot. It's yeah. much easier to balance out from, from that as opposed to being way off your center of gravity. Mike took a good shot at that. That was a five on his spare, 79 in the seventh. And he's just trying to collect some pins here. And this is almost a finish up a good showing in this tournament. Carbon copy score wise of our first match where one bowler jumps out to the early lead with a double and the other's trying to play catch up and, and, and can't get there. And, uh, he missed, missed the head pin a lot, been off to the left a lot. Senses frustration with his uh, reaction to that ball. Leaves the 1-3-10. Really, yeah, his, his tournament was, uh, I think he's going to walk away with a frustrated feeling from this particular game, but when he's... Uh, when he's able to have a little bit of a, a broader perspective about the day, I think he's going to look back very favorably on his day. His last, uh, you know, he, he's at almost 400 through three, uh, 395, and then shoots uh, almost, he shoots 323 for his last two games right. to qualify to get to get to where he is, then advances through yeah, make the it first to, round. I mean, make it to the final four of the, of the series finals. Much you can ask for, just not having a, a good performance here, unfortunately, in this match. And Eric is, even if Mike was bowling well, it'd be difficult to be catching Eric. Eric's, yeah. Eric's in the zone. And as soon as I say that, he leaves the 5 10. A little light of a hit, though, wasn't it? Yeah, light in the 1 2. Almost same, same ball is almost going to cover this, I think. His ball is tracking in that direction today, a little too far. But it will not matter in the final frames of this game. He's got this match well in hand. 156 in the ninth. Just want to end on a positive note. Doesn't right. have to be a triple or anything like that. Just three consecutive good balls. I see that ball light in the one, the one two. Yeah. I'm sure Eric was expecting something like that. And now heavy through the middle, so no, he's, he has this match well in hand, obviously, but these last two frames where you're a little light and now you rip the middle. You know, what kind of an impact do you think that has mentally heading into the last, into the into the finals? Well, I think uh, there, you know, first of all, we're talking about a very seasoned, you know, bowler here who I, I think is as good as anybody at just leaving behind bad frames and moving forward. But I would also just say that he, he was on the head pin. He was light. He was he was heavy on that one, and then and then almost got a ten box. Um, it is a game of inches, but right. he's, he's not missing his object pin. I think we, that's when you start thinking a little bit more True. is when you're, off your, when you're off your object pin two or three out of the last six balls. So, yeah, I think, I think Eric, Eric's definitely able just to kind of stay in the moment, not let his thoughts you know, head off into bad places and things like that. He definitely has confidence, or else he would not have the resume that he has over the course of his bowling career. Yeah. Eric, well, 
Mike, uh, Mike Labrie with a spare in the 10. Erica, BAC Hall of Fame member, uh, many time winner of, uh, of BAC tournament events. There's Mike Labrie wrapping his tournament up. Uh, that's a nine fill, you know, spare a nine in the end. It's a consolation, uh, probably not, not much of a consolation to him, but uh, a, good, um, yeah. a good finish to his tournament, 115 right. to 165. Congratulations to Eric Pellet. We're going to try to get a word in with one or both of these bowlers. And we'll take another second here to just say thank you very much to Ketsup and Mustard. Uh, t tournaments, BAC Tournament Series sponsor. Um, we appreciate the support this year. And we encourage everybody to go stop down. Main Street, Manchester. Great burgers, great beer. And we're going to throw it to Jim here in just a moment. Jim, Jim's standing by with Eric. Uh, what do you think, Jim? What does Eric have to say after that match? Thanks, Eric. Here with semifinal winner, Eric, Eric Pellet. I almost said Eric Latesca. Then I looked at you. Easy match. He started off with the double early and kind of just coasted from there. Yeah, I got out of the gate early, so, uh, you know, it's made it made it a little bit easier. And uh, Mike struggled a little bit, but, you know, it was, it was good. It was, uh, it was tough yesterday. I, like I said, I've been hurting all day today, but I think yesterday helped me out. Actually, with my leg and that it actually uh, feels like I smooth it out a little bit, so it was, it was good. Yeah, we're saying in the booth that having that muscle pull might help you keep from over rushing the line, overthrowing, just making sure that you're staying in that normal rhythm. With uh, one more match, one more match to go, and, and you can call yourself the uh, tournament series finals. Any any final thoughts before you? Uh, what are you thinking about right now? Yeah, I'm just thinking about just keep what I'm doing right now. You know, just stay up there, stay straight in the line, keep down. It's actually slowed me down, so hopefully that'll stay the same. Um, and, you know, just hopefully it works out. And it's going to be either Ken Thomas or Sean Latesca. Any preference? No matter. It doesn't matter who. You know, it's final match. Just go out and have fun. Whoever wins, wins. There you go. Well, hey, good luck, and uh, we'll see you in the finals. Right. Thank you. Those are uh, very expected comments from Eric there. He's very easygoing and very ready uh, for whatever comes at him. So to recap where we where we stand, we've gone through two rounds of the, uh, we're concluding rather, the second round of the series finals, uh, playoffs for the series finals. And so far, uh, the first match was top seeded. Ken Thomas, he defeated uh, myself, Eric Latesca. Uh, we just watched uh, Eric Pellet, the number two seed, uh, but in his first match, he defeated John Zekas. Uh, Mike Labrie defeated Cindy Buinger, uh, and then and then Sean Latesca, my brother, defeated Jeff Corneliuson to advance himself to uh, the round that we just watched. The result of the two matches that were going on simultaneously, you watched one of them was Eric, DeFellet, <laughs> Eric, De Eric Pellet defeating Mike Labrie, and then... Um, my brother advanced against uh, Ken Thomas. He um, is also standing by right now with Jim Coffin. We're going to have a word with him ahead of his match. And Jim. Thanks, Eric. I'm with a familiar face to you, Sean Latesca, also donning the uh, Duckpin TV gear. We appreciate that. He's our second finalist. He's going to go up against Eric Pellet. He defeated Kenny Thomas. You had a one, 170, I believe, that game. 160? What, 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 what? 48, I believe. 48 the second game, but 157 the first game against Jeff. Maybe I was looking at it with handicap. Maybe that's what I was looking at. Okay. But still, nonetheless, bowling well. Made your way to the finals here. How's your day been? I mean, obviously, it's been pretty good, but what are your thoughts? Uh, in my opinion, you know, get, you get some, you, you miss some. I'm, I could definitely be better on the second ball, but I've been holding my wood a lot. So, I mean, it's what gets you places. You can't give them up. That's what we've been talking about with one-game matches. Every pin counts, so... You're able to cover cover breaks and cover your woods, and good things usually happen. So, any thoughts uh, bowling against Eric? Have you bowled head to head much? Yeah, I've bowled him. I do believe two years ago in the Masters here. Um, a tough tough bowler. You never know what's going to come out of his hand. So, I'm just going to go up there and try and hit everything I can and not leave any on the plate for him. That's all you can do. Best of luck to you, and uh, 
we'll see you in the finals. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. All right. Um, so we've got, we're setting ourselves up for a very exciting final. And this is a, the conclusion of, of many events, in fact. We've had, um, we've had a series of tournaments that bowlers have qualified to, that bowlers uh, competed in to even qualify for the event you're watching. Uh, this is this is really the long road, right? And uh, bowlers have uh, have also started their uh, their day here with five ma five games. They've got one more game to go here, but they've also bowled two more uh, matches head to head against other qualifiers for the finals. And um, we've got high scores going right. into this by both bowlers in both of their matches. Uh, one of the better scoring houses in the state. Bowlers have been taking advantage of it. Like you said, lots of lots of high scores, 150s, 160s, 170s. And we have two bowlers, obviously, bowling well, and Eric and Sean. Waiting to figure out what the handicap's going to be here so we can factor that into the scoring. Yeah, you mentioned the house a moment ago. Jim, it's also... A good moment to, um, you know, thank Johnson's Lanes down here in Hamden, Connecticut, for, you know, their continued support of the tournament series and the, um, you know, we've had a great, we've had a great tournament so far, a great series final event. The t uh, alley has operated very smoothly. We also had uh, the son and the nephew of the proprietor, Sandy Thomas, who both qualified for the final. Uh, Ken. Ken just uh, uh, defeated by Sean, but uh, top qualifier, and then and then also uh, advanced through the first round. Then we had uh, oh, here's here's Ken and his match, first match. What a ball that was in the one-two pocket. There were many of those in and that game, and the one that we had on the camera. And that was a match of heavy hits. Who was going to? break them up, and who was looking at splits and rips. And Kenny, Kenny came out on top there. Here's Eric Pellet's form. Again, I'd love to put that in a bottle and sell it yeah, that was, or keep it for myself. <laughs> that was very, very solid delivery, and you saw the outcome, and that's what happens when Eric looks like that. I mean, right. he's going to be he's gonna be tough. Um, Sean is really, really hot. I don't know how to call it. Uh, this I know, and you've got that uh, familial... Uh, pull, you know, trying to stay unbiased here, but both bowling well, both, good yeah. scoring house. Right. It may, I mean, uh, so Hard to pick a winner, and we did find out that uh, Sean is getting three pins from Eric. So. Three pins. So you can see anything happen, happening in this match here. Honestly, the, you could see exactly what we saw in the first two matches on this pair that were on camera, where one bowler got out of the gate and the other bowler was, uh, you know, either unlucky or just fell behind pretty pretty quickly. Right. You know, and it looks like, I, I don't know who was the higher seed, but uh, Sean will be going first and also uh, finishing his game last. And he is starting on lane one. Here we go. A little extra ink behind that first ball, it looked like. Yeah. The side for six. Yeah, that first ball with uh, just a little break in between, you know, little cobwebs, <laughs> a few cobwebs well, developed. I think he just shook the cobwebs off there. He did. Dusted them right off. Uh, we'll see how Eric is going to start his game. He gets to go one, two. I don't know. I, again, Jim, I don't know who actually got to choose, but I, I could see Eric def deferring and letting Sean start and finish. Just as just as well as I could see him wanting to fin uh, to close the game. Um, no, knowing Eric, I would think he would want to finish. Yeah. But I know a lot of bowlers like the strategy of putting the pressure on the other bowler in the tenth frame. Yeah, Eric is very well known for his, you know, ability to get up there and close out a match and get exactly what he needs to to win something. Absolutely, I bowled with Eric on many teams over the years, and if there was someone I, I needed to choose to. Get a mark in the 10th to win. 
He's my man. So yeah, I have uh, I have been the victim of a few uh, <laughs> last minute l losses to Eric Eric Pellet. He is not somebody I like leaving the door open for if I if wow. I can help it. Two mirror image rips for Eric to start this match. Or five each time. He was, I assume he was going to try to slide that over. I mean, there's no point sure. in not trying to convert a little bit here so early in the match. He was slid it out a little too far, but a nine box is, is okay. And Sean's got a... So already, though, in, in just a frame and a half, Eric's given Sean three pins in a handicap. He's given him three pins by leaving three pins of, of wood up on the plates. And Sean has a mark. So not the best start for Eric. Very good start for Sean. Looking to add to his lead here. Very early second frame of the finals. Oh, what a ball. That's a maximum add. He jumps out to a 15-pin lead. You get to see this angle. Sean deliver the ball. Very focused. Very, very square and tight. Yes, very similar to his brother. A little more oomph on the ball. A little more higher backswing. Yeah, very nice. When he's well-balanced, he's got a great pendulum. Strike spare to start. Oh, and he pulls on that one, and they mix well. Yep. Almost with the backdoor double, but leaves just the head pin. The replay of Sean's approach you and delivery. See him, you kind of see him offset his head really quickly in the in the approach. I also think he, he may have changed his, his angle inadvertently by doing that, and that's, that's how he pulled it off to the left. But takes, takes full advantage. advantage. Also notice during that replay that he, he takes his left hand and brings it across his body, you know, maybe halfway through the approach, and then extends it back out to the side. You know, I've think noticed that before. I don't know if he if he always does that or if he's doing if it's a little more pronounced here at Johnson's. The reason being he comes from the left, and when you get on that right lane, that ball return can really really affect you. And also on being on lane one with that first ball that the wall to, to worry about too. Yeah. Is Eric crossing over the head pin? I it was light. I wonder if he was really trying to be conservative. Oh and you That's heard that a rare that miss. Thud, uh, an unusual an unusual drop ball there. Didn't quite finish his delivery. Follow through. Yeah, you definitely That's hear the difference. More. Probably one of, start so far for one of Eric. The, one of the worst starts for Eric and one of the best starts for Sean. Yep. And again, we see one bowler jump out to a big lead early. And there's Eric again crossing over and lighting the one two, but this house does does not mind that so much. Right. You can usually count on a on a spare break, and he has two times in a row. He's got to take advantage of this one. Funny on the replay there, you could actually see Eric still shaking his head from missing the single <laughs> last frame. Yeah, he knows that was nine pins he he could have used. Ten frames in one match just they go by very quickly. Looking to right the ship here. And he got it. So Eric's on the board in the finals. 37 plus in the fourth. Sean Latesca, 53-plus in the third. Sean is faced with a really big opportunity here. He's counting on top of a spare here in the third frame. Great and ball. Great ball, great result. Nicely placed in that one-two pocket. Gets some action off the wall. You get a second look at it here. He is, he is sliding very, very well. Very well-supported swing. That ball was a little light, but it had good drive on it, so he gets the pin action off the walls to take out the five. And 
his lead is already up to 36 after just four frames. And another great ball and a messenger to carry the seven pin, and that is a double. Yep. A little extra lift on that ball. A little extra juice behind it. Crosses over to the one three. Sees the seven eight for a split second. Wood takes out the eight, and the messenger takes out the seven. Eric filling a spare there. Crosses over even farther. He's been late in the one two. That went on the outside of the two. And wow. a good shot at that one. That's probably a more reliable way to shoot it than the outside of the four. Just wasn't quite heavy enough to carry that sleeper pin. Eric with 51 halfway through the final match of the Corey's Ketchup and Mustard Tournament Series Finals here at Johnson's Lanes in Hamden, Connecticut. It's been a long road for both these bowlers through season, season worth of tournament qualifying. They won two games head-to-head -head today after five games of qualifying this morning, now facing each other. Yeah, that ball a little bit more what you expect from, from Eric, and it's probably the first one in a while we've seen on the right side of the pocket. And that was not what you expect. Seeing the very uncharacteristic. Yeah, a little uh, so some frustration there, and that went a little bit more in front of his face. And I wonder if maybe that muscle pull, leg muscle pull, might be finally having an effect on him. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 that, and then you know he is playing from pretty far behind at this point, which he hasn't had to do. Um, even even as strong as he is as a men mentally as a bowler, um, start you, pressing. You start pressing. There's no doubt about it, and um, that leads to misses for just as much as it leads to hits. I, I think so. Here's on a double, another wow. great ball. Almost that's the same ball that that got him the strike on this this lane the last time. That's 92 in the fourth frame for Sean. More than double Eric's score after four. He's got 111 in the fifth plus. And, oh, just a little bit outside of it. Still increases his lead now to 60 after five. Looking to maintain that 60 pin lead. And gives one back. 59 pin difference with just four frames to go. I believe this was a similar situation you were in against Kenny. You were looking at 50 plus pin de deficit with four frames. What's going through your mind at this point, if you're Eric? Well, if you're Eric, um, you know, uh, the head pin is, is the next thing that you have to do. You're thinking about the one ball and one ball only, and if you carry a strike, then you still have a chance, and if you don't, you're, you're trying, to, trying to make the best showing you can, you know? Ooh. Um, that one got away from Sean, but lucky break. There's so you know there's very little in your control at this point, right? Right. Uh, you need you need strikes to carry, uh, and you need your opponent to have opens, um, and right. almost all of them at this right. point, right? So, so the only thing there is to uh, to try and do is, you know, hit your object pin, and you got to try to reduce it to that and only that. Much better ball from Sean there to cover up the two pinner. Sean, after a short break in the sixth, converts the two pinner. Pressure reapplied. And I, I would say, you know, that, that might be it. I mean, if he had missed it, thoughts start going through Sean's head, start, starts, positive thoughts start going through Eric's head, but Sean shut that down by covering it up. Eric almost with a backdoor strike here. Seen a lot of action off the head pin here on one and two. Yeah, he Here's carried the same, pretty much the same hit in that last match against Mike early, which he turned into a double and almost got it this time. If it wasn't, I would say if it wasn't quite over before this frame, Jim, it might be might be over now that he right. didn't get that strike. Well, let's do the math here. If Eric strikes out, that's 171. Sean already has, he's already 60, 60 up on his box, so Eric, so Sean would only need one mark if Eric strikes out. Right. That's a tall order 
five strikes in a row. And that is not a strike. A little light. Had both the nine and the ten shaking, but neither fall. Needed both to fall. Oh, and he... Wow. wow. I'm glad we got that one on camera. There's a really, really difficult thing to convert, even though those pins are close. That is... There is such a razor-thin margin for, you know, to, to hit that perfectly and convert it. Look at this. Eric's wow. still finding a way to entertain us back here. This That was a... And if there was an 11 pin, he would have taken that out, too. <laughs> but, again, it might be a case of too little, too late. It's now... All real Sean really needs to do is put a good fill up here. Oh, and three on the fill. So from a mathematical standpoint, Eric's still alive in this match. And now it's just, again, a matter of Sean, like he had mentioned in his pre-match interview, just holding wood. Oh, and look at this. And instead he almost converts it for a spare. Yeah, and I mean, that is almost, <laughs> that is just as difficult almost as the 9-10 uh, the uh, yeah. to convert, and we almost... Saw it back to back frames. Spares on really tough leads. Just uh, ideal second shot, light on the three pin, trying to get the deadwood to bounce around, gets it. But yeah, he shot two. a textbook, and then that's a great 10 box for Sean. Absolutely. After a, just a three fill on the spare to get the maximum out of that frame without a, without a spare. And again, so it's just a matter of. It's 159 is the max for Eric Pellet, and Sean needs. 18 pins, 17 Eight. pins over these last two frames to shut out Eric. Wow. Oh, what a what a leave that was. You know, there's something you don't see very no. often. I mean, the it was clean too. Four it's six is not uncommon. The three four six is pretty common, but not the four six nine. Not that. Normally, you see pin action side to side. Those pins were front and back. They yeah. Either went to the pit or jumped jumped over the remaining standing pins into the gutters. So, again, it's just a matter of holding your wood here. That's right. Wow. And he I don't think he was trying in between to, him. I don't think he was trying to make it, but he almost did. Nope. It's another important pin up here. I wonder if he had just clipped this, the nine pin on the way. <laughs> Might have redirected the, the, the six over to the four. Big, nine, big nine pins there. And uh, eight more. Eight more will do it. And hashtag strike or die for Eric Pellet. Uh, and that's not a strike. No, that that ball was off. I, I will say what I was watching was Eric still really, really focused on trying to put a ball on the head pin there. Did not want to leave anything out on the table. And that was an off-the-mark ball and puts a period on the outcome of this match and the tournament. So your 2017-18 Tournament Series champion, sponsored by Corey's Ketchup and Mustard, is Sean Latesca. Congratulations, Sean as we're going to watch Eric and Sean finish up their 10 frames here. These two very gracious uh, opponents throughout the match. Eric, though, behind, uh, just classy, always always a handout, right. encouraging Sean. and Cheering each other on. Personally, I'm not a big fan of cheering on my opponent. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give him my hand and clap for him, but not going to encourage you much more than that. Right you know, here. so I, I we've gone this whole time here, and I have failed to mention that you are a past winner of the BAC Tournament Series Finals. Was that 2016? 2015. 2015. Three years ago here, also at Johnson's, against uh, Tommy Clausen. And Sean taking a victory lap here. The side for two. Yeah, I think he's just kind of breathing a sigh of relief as he's taking his approach. And right. Swinging nice and easy. <laughs> he sneaks the ball behind the head pin to slide over the five pin. Yeah. And all of this does not matter. 
be two more pins to get to 160 with handicap. Oh, he covers and them all. Great 10 and a great game for Sean. 162 uh, with his handicap. I think 159, that's a 159 scratch, scratch. Right. Great bowling by Sean. Defeats Eric Pellet in the finals. He is our 2017 18 BAC Tournament Series champion. We're going to try and get words with both the winner and the runner up. Again, we want to thank Corey's. So the finals, along with all of our other sponsors. Eric, you want to take it over for a second? We're going to go try and get some words with the two finalists. Sure. Uh, so we'll. Bowling that we saw in this uh, in this last match. Um, again, an exciting match. Uh, exciting uh, tournament. This was uh, there was just tons of great scores. Here's our champion, Sean Plateska. He was filling a spare in the fourth frame here early on. Had a little bit of an advantage uh, at that point, but then a ball in the one-two pocket. Uses the walls well. Follows that up with another ball on lane one, right on the, right on the mark. Gets the messenger to uh, to carry the seven pin for a double, and this is really where Sean separated himself from Eric, and there was not a lot of uh, opportunity for Eric to come back after that. Sean filling that double with a big nine in, in the one-two pocket, almost got himself a triple. And that was, that was how we got here. So Jim is standing by with our runner-up. Jim, what does Eric think of his uh, his outing at this at, Thanks, the, at the finals? Oh, sorry, thank you, Eric. I'm here with the runner-up, Eric Pellet. I'm about to make a very corny pun that you had no mustard on your ball there the last frame, and you had to catch up, try and catch up against Sean. What happened out there? Ah, I just got lazy and just getting tired out there. So and he bowled well. He bowled awesome. So deserving to him. So. All right, I'll take take second. Nothing wrong with second. So. You know, obviously not the final result you wanted, but after a, a season of qualifying and all the qualifying and head-to-head -head bowling today, to, to make it all the way to the finals is a great accomplishment to add to your resume. Yeah, definitely. Uh, didn't even like I said, I didn't even know if I was going to bowl today. It was hurting, but uh, happy with the coming in second. So once again, uh, deserving for Sean. So congratulations, Sean. So. Was the uh, the muscle pull? Did that come into play? Was did that tighten up on you or? Anything different from the last matches? Not really. It was just more. I was just getting tired. You know, but no, it's definitely not an excuse. That's for sure. After bowling the tournament yeah. yesterday in Rhode Island, and this is your eighth game today. So that's a lot of bowling over the course of a weekend with an injury. So, but like you said, no excuses. Sean bowled great, and uh, again, congratulations, uh, runner-up. And uh, we're going to try and get words with our champion here in just one second. Thanks, Eric. So. Uh Gracious uh, exit by Hall, BAC Hall of Famer Eric Pellet. We are um, just going to do a quick recap of the bracket finals here. Um, there's Sean at the bottom. His path to the very final match, he defeated Jeff Corneliuson, followed by the matchup with the number one seed, uh, Ken Thomas. He went through Ken on lanes five and six, and then we watched him defeat Eric Pellet on lanes one and two. Final score with handicap 162 to 109. Jim is now standing by with Sean for his words. Thank Jim. you, Eric. Thank you. I'm here with the Ketchup and Mustard Tournament Series champion, Sean Latesca. Defeated Eric Pellet in the finals. Great bowling all the way through today. Uh, came out with five marks in a row, including a double in that match. How'd you feel out there? Oh, man. I mean, they were just coming out my hand right. When they do, you just got to let them go sometimes. Yeah, of course, you know, I missed a, missed a little bit here, but very happy with the outcome. First time ever, so it was a little bittersweet being knocked out in the first round last year. And then getting to bowl with the same person and then not losing this year. So a lot of work up there, lots of balls. Definitely tired as well. <laughs> a lot of bowling over the course of the of course of the day to bowl eight games in a pretty pretty quick fashion, but you took care of business out there. Uh, 
I know there's a pro tour coming up in a couple of weeks. Now coming off victory here, any thoughts of maybe trying to carry the momentum over into other tournaments? I mean, there's, I'm not positive yet. I haven't thought about it, but you know, if things are going well, you know, you never know. I mean, you, if you could go there and do terrible too, so it's very up and down sometimes. So I'm just happy to get this one out the way. So, you know, one at a time. One at a time. I'll think about it. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd recommend any tournaments you bowl going forward. You might want to keep wearing that shirt. It seemed to work out well for you. Congratulations on being the uh, tournament series champion, and we'll send it back to Eric. All right. Thank you. Um, congratulations again to Sean Latesca. What uh, what a tournament he had. Um, this is this is going to wrap our show here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I just want to give a shout out to uh, all of the proprietors of the centers who uh, supported the tournament series over the over the course of the season. Uh, thank you very much to our tournament director, Marianne Belniak uh, Kachevsky. Uh, thank you to Duckfin TV staff and um, and again to Johnson's Lanes. Um, what an uh, what an outcome, and uh, we're looking forward to more Duckfin TV action in the future. Jim, any last words? No, just we saw a lot of a lot of great bowling. Unfortunately, they weren't. Two people at the same time in the same match. You know, we, we had one bowler bowl great each match, and the other bowler struggled. But obviously, Sean took care of business in that finals, as we're seeing a replay here of a messenger strike where he was looking at the 7-8, finishes with a strike, and that carried, helped carry him to victory. I would just echo the same comments you made. It's been a great tournament season here for the Bowlers Association of Connecticut. Thanks again to Corey's Ketchup and Mustard and all, all of our other sponsors all of the bowlers that supported the tournament series and also supported the BAC through all the various fundraisers. Yeah. I think we had a great a great year compared to last year and we hope to build on it going forward. Right. Great it's a great note to end on. I think um, the 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 members of the board, local association, it doesn't matter whether it's here in Connecticut or uh, you know in Rhode Island anywhere else in this uh, where we where we play this game supports your board support your tournament directors this this game doesn't happen and the way that it you know it's not an organized game without those people we need their uh, continued efforts and uh, I'm personally grateful for everything that uh, that uh, everyone does to keep this game going absolutely and, and also finally just you know, support our sponsors they've you know, made a financial commitment they're not guaranteed anything in return other than a little bit of advertising from us and they helped build this tournament prize fund to what it was, like $1,000 to the champion, which is a great number, you know, for considering the, you know, the size of the tournament field that we have. So, Yeah, very proud of that. So um, with that, we'll, we'll sign off here. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next time right here on Duckfin TV.